Good morning to everyone. Once again, we come via the internet. Here it is on another Sunday morning. Why I miss you. I want to tell you that it, it's just something about God's people gathering together that brings us joy and, and, and brings us such fellowship and such love. And, and I'm, I miss my church family. I hope you're doing well. If, please call a church office or call me, call one of the elders, call Daniel, call, call someone. If, if you are in need of something, we want to be there to help you. We want to be there and to, to encourage you. And, and we know this, we have this social distancing and so that we have, uh, we can't get out and visit and such like that and can't come together and meet. And I know at least we have the internet. At least we can have this message brought to you uh, on the internet. I know it's not the same, not meant to be the same, but it is something. And I'm glad that you're participating and, and watching and, and sharing together as we come together this Lord's Day to worship God and, and remember Him on this Lord's Day. Oh, we're so thankful that there is a God. So thankful that He is in control and in all things that go on in this world, God is in control. You know, sometimes we wonder about tomorrow and what tomorrow may bring. And, and, you know, in the Bible, we read of certain things that may relate to us during that. You turn to Psalm 11. As David questioned about certain things, saying, you know, David was a, a, a shepherd boy. He uh, kept sheep, and so he knew what it was to be a shepherd and what it was to watch over them and protect them. He protected them from the lion and protected them from the bear and gave glory to God. David knew what it was to be a soldier. He was the one who went out even before he was a soldier. Now, he was a uh, soldier who received such acclimates as Saul has t killed his thousand, but David has killed his ten thousands. And yet the very first time we read about him in a battle, he was not a soldier yet, and he went out and conquered Goliath. We read about David and being in the king's court and soothing Saul during this time. We read about David being king. In Psalm 11, David wrote some particular things, and it was in particular as he was seeking an answer of what was happening around him, there was turmoil going around, uh, around him, and, and his enemies sought him, and, and he was wondering what to do, and it, he was given advice, go, go flee to the mountain. He said, shall I flee to the mountain? He said, I will not. Now, there are times it's not wrong to flee. We can read in Matthew chapter 24 when Jesus was there, and he's telling his disciples that, that when you see the enemies coming when Jerusalem is surrounded in Matthew 24 he said you flee to the mountains and you get out of here and so it's not wrong to flee but David was facing a decision what shall I do I don't know what to do don't know where to go but he said in verse 3 I know where to place my hope because in verse 3 he said if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do and so he didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to go. But he did know in whom to trust. And that's our message for this morning. It may be we don't know what to do. It may be that we don't know where to go. Or we may not be able to go anywhere. But we do know in whom to trust. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And these are trying times upon us. But I pray that they don't try our foundations and don't destroy our foundations foundations are so important probably one of the most well-known foundation illustrations is is over in italy with the leaning tower of pizza and so it is that, that the tower was not meant to lean it was built upon faulty foundations and and the foundations gave way and it leans now not on intent but because of poor foundation. It still stands. It just leans. Our foundations are so important. Think about our foundations. What are your foundations? If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? What are the foundations? Number one, there is a God. Isn't that a great foundation to know that there is God? 
God is. God who created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. He still sustains, sustains us today. He watches over us. He listens to our prayers. He is our guide. He is our counselor. He is our refuge. He is our strength. There is a God. He not only created us, but he revealed himself to us. He revealed himself in, in the Bible through the word of God. And we have scripture that we can read and, and we can look and we can see that the the heavens declare the glory of God, it says in Psalm 19, but yet nature cannot reveal God to us. It can reveal there is a God. It can give evidence for God. For that which is created, there must be a creator. And God is the one who is. But he has revealed himself through his word. And we can read it, and study it, and memorize it. Isn't it great that we have the foundation that there is a God, our creator, isn't it great that we have his word revealed to us to know what to do and, and not to do, to, to know who God is and how he deals with his people, to know who we are and how we deal with other people. Isn't it great to have the word of God? I hope you're spending some time in the word of God this week. Open it, study it, meditate upon it, memorize it, share it with others. The Bible is the word of God. The foundation that God is. The foundation that the Bible is the word of God. The foundation that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus was not just a person that lived upon this earth who, who did good, who told good morals and, and living. No, he was completely different from in what he said and what he did and who he was. The son of God. God in the flesh. John chapter 1 says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That Word which was in the beginning, John 1 verse 1, became flesh. Our foundations, there is a God. He has revealed himself through the Bible, the Word of God. He has revealed himself through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Another foundation is there is a judgment day coming. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things which he has done in his body according to that which he has done, whether good or bad. Judgment day, our foundation. You know, all these foundations are found in Genesis chapter 1. Well, 1 through 3. We go to the, to the very beginning of the scripture where it is, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God created the heavens and the earth. That's foundational. Our very foundation that there is a God. God is our creator. Isn't that wonderful? And we read about that creation account. And we continue to the reading that God made us everything in Genesis 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Verse 27 says, though God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Yeah. God set forth us. Male and female. A foundation. And God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Verse 15 of chapter 2 said, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden and to dress it and keep it. And then God said, It is not good that man be alone. I'll make a helpmeet for him. Out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field, Brought it before Adam to see, and whatsoever he would call it, he named that creature. And yet in verse 21 it says, And God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. He slept, and he took one of the ribs, and closed up the flesh thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made woman, and brought her unto man. And we see the foundation that God is. We see the foundation that God is our creator. We see the foundation of family also. 
male and female, of, of marriage, of family. In Matthew chapter 19, whenever Jesus was asked about divorce and marriage and such, and he went back to the beginning. He said, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And for this cause shall a man leave his mother and, and father and shall cleave unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Wherefore they shall no more be two, but one flesh. What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. We see the foundation that there is a God, and God is our creator. We see the foundation that family is God-ordained. Male and female created he them. I hope that we spend this time to, to strengthen that bond of family during this time that we are quarantined, to love one another and care for one another, check up on one another, help one another. Family is so important. God ordained family. And then we see the foundation of our morality for what God has said and what man has said or maybe what the devil has said. You see, that's a foundation. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The foundation of right and wrong. You see, in chapter 3 we read that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field in which the Lord God has made. He said unto woman, Has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The woman said, Yes, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And so we have a foundation of right and wrong, of righteousness and unrighteousness, of that which would we can say that God has given to us and that which God has not given to us. There's a foundation there. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? And so now we're being tested. Do we do what God said? Or do we do what the devil says? Oh, Eve was there. She didn't know what to do. She looked and she saw the fruit. The woman saw that the tree was good for food. She saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. And the tree was to be desired to make one wise. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave to her husband with her and he did eat. A foundation, a foundation that says, you know, God gives you a choice of what to do. He is our creator. He loves us and sustains us and only wants what's best for us. You know, whenever he created Adam and Eve and after his creation, after the, all of his creating, he looked down upon his creation and he said in the close of chapter 1, and it was very good, very good. God only wants what's best for us. And we have the foundation that God is. We have the foundation of God's word, right and wrong. Do we follow after what is right, what God has said? Or do we follow after what someone else has said? We're faced in, in trying times. The world around us. More and more are not believing in God, not believing in the Bible as the Word of God, not believing that Jesus is the Son of God, not believing in heaven and hell, not believing in Judgment Day. You know, Adam and Eve faced a day of judgment, not our final Judgment Day, but they faced a day of judgment. God came and said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I was afraid and because I was naked and I hid myself. And God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Adam, Adam knew he did wrong. And he tried to cast the blame on someone else. He said, first of all, he said, the woman that you gave me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And then God said to the woman, said, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Maybe on the judgment day it is that we come up with one excuse or another, one reason or another, but they will not stand. God said, what 
is this you have done. I think about the world and its, and its righteousness and unrighteousness. There's still people wanting to do what's right. I believe that with all my heart. There are people searching for right. I believe that with all my heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? This is what we do. Number one, trust in God as our creator, our sustainer, the giver of all good things. He has seen us through the past. He will see us through the future. Number two, Continue to read your Bible, God's holy word, to know what's right and know what's wrong, to know that, that this is what God has said. And whenever it is that we come in, in conflict with God's word, as Adam and Eve did, hey, has God really said this? Yes, he has. And he wants us to believe it and obey it. Because like Adam and Eve, there will come a judgment day. There will come a day of accounting whenever it is that God would say to us, what is this that you have done? Why did you turn from me? Why did you not follow me? Oh, it was so simple for Adam and Eve to follow after God's commandment. One commandment, right? Just, just one thing. One thing. He didn't give them a, a whole list, 600 commandments or so to follow. He said, just do one thing. I'll give you everything you need. I'll give you everything you have here to sustain you. You have it all given to you. And they went where they were not supposed to go. Oh, sounds familiar, doesn't it? I think of the story of the prodigal son. He had everything which he had longed for finally. And he left it. And he came back. Oh, God has given us all things that we need, all things that we can enjoy. Have you turned your back on that? Have you left it? If so, like the prodigal son, come back to God who created you. Come back to his precious promises through the, through the Bible. Come back to the Lord's church, God's family. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Come back to what is right, righteous, righteousness, God's word. Come back in becoming a Christian. If it is that you're not a Christian and you're listening to this, maybe you, you, you've been convinced through, through times and through talking with others and through studying the Bible, yes, I believe that God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, I believe that God has revealed himself through the Bible, his holy word. And I read about the plan of salvation. What must I do to be saved? You read in Mark 16, verse 16, that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. And Jesus said these words to his disciples as he told them to go out and to preach the gospel. He that believeth, believeth what? Believeth the gospel which was preached. He that believeth the gospel and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. In Acts chapter 2, whenever Peter was preaching the gospel, the people in the audience just listened and, and said, What shall we do? Just interrupted Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, Repent. You see, they already believed that the one whom they had crucified was Jesus, the Son of God. And now they needed to repent. Oh, they were cut to their heart. Oh, they were cut deep to their heart. Repent and turn to God, Acts 3.19 says. Acts 2.38 says to repent and be baptized, every one of you, for remission of sins. That's saying that your sins be washed away. Like Saul, in, when Ananias came to him in Acts 22, verse 16, and said, And now why tarriest thou, Saul? Arise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Repent, be baptized for remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some 3,000 
obeyed, and were baptized. What about you? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The first foundation is obey the word of God. Become a Christian. All angels in heaven would rejoice. We would rejoice with you. Why not? Why not think about it? Why not pray about it? Why not to respond to the gospel invitation? Oh, as we are in isolation, oh boy, I miss one, every one of you. I give you a virtual hug today. Think about this from Psalm 11, verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Thank you for your time.